welcome to Drive Spark. I'm Stephen Neal, and joining us today in this video is Mr. Mohit Yadav, co-founder of RevOS. Glad to have you on the video. Thank you. RevOS is one of the leading infrastructure providers for electric vehicles in the country, and today RevOS has launched this, the Bolt Charging Point. It's the largest peer-to-peer -peer charging network for electric vehicles. So, what is it? Let's start off with the word peer-to-peer, -peer and what is this concept? So, over to you. Absolutely. I think it's a great question. Peer-to-peer, -peer, essentially what it means is this charger can be shared. So as an EV owner, you are anyway plugging your charger into some socket. And we have built it extremely affordable, so it can be just bundled off as an accessory and you can just buy it for to monitor your charge, right? How much you're spending on electricity and all those things. Why peer-to-peer? -peer? That it can be shared. When you are not using your charger, you can share it with others, become a part of the solution and expand the network while doing so and make some passive income. So the flexibility is, the best part is you can, the owner can set their own rates. We don't have any say on how many, what is the rate that you're setting. You are the, you are in charge of what rates you're setting, who, when do you want to make your public, charger public, when do you make, want to make it private, it's absolutely up to you, hence the term peer-to-peer. -peer. You Please. mentioned that uh, we can make it public or private whenever required. So does that mean that, you know, I get to turn off the GPS or turn it on so that others can track that there's a charger at this location? Yeah, so by the nature of this charger is that once you put it, you aren't going to be moving it a lot, right? So when you do, when the charger is being initialized, there is an option to specify the location where the charger is being installed. And as a host of the charger, there is always an option to update the GPS location anytime you want, if you move the charger as well. Okay, great. So now, since we're already talking about GPS and, you know, technical stuff, give us a little technical lowdown about the charger itself, about the unit. It's pretty compact. Yeah. So how have you integrated all the electronics into this? Well, <clears throat> to be honest, it's good engineering. So uh, usually if you look at charger, they are very expensive. Right. Ours is at 3000 rupees, right? right. MRP 3000. So what we have done is we've used, as we here at RevOS, we are like a software company. We make the best software. We make the software that, do, that goes inside the vehicles also. And now we have a software which runs and powers this cha these chargers also. So what we have done is we've removed all the redundant hardware parts that were required for security. We have replaced them with smart software and algorithms and logic so that the price essentially comes down. Okay, so now in this answer, you mentioned two things that caught my attention. One, you mentioned the price. You said it costs rupees 3000. Along with that, there is something for rupees one. Yes. I'd like you to talk about that a bit. Absolutely. So the in, uh, the intention is in uh, in a coming few weeks, I can't really disclose the date, it's still under, under wraps. What we'd be doing is we would be offering this charger that is at MRP 3000. We'll be giving it out for at one rupee. So the idea why we are giving out for one rupee is we want all the people to have that option, the public to have that option. So anyone who wants to participate in this charging revolution and sees if, if there was an option for me to, you know, become a participant and solve this for others, it's just that these chargers cost too much money. Mm -hmm. And the PCO box model was successful because the prices of phones were very really less. Absolutely. So that's what we're banking on. So if you want to become a part of the solution, you see you see yourself as a climate warrior and see yourself that you 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 have that intention to solve it for others. Here we are, we are offering it for one rupee. There is absolutely no reason for you to say no. So that's the intention here. So a charger for one rupee. So that's super cool. Now, how many units will you sell at one rupee? Uh, that is still under wraps, but okay. in several thousands. Several thousand chargers at just one rupee for each charger. That is super cool. Now, let's talk about RevOS, the brand a bit. So you also mentioned that you have software for the vehicle. You also have hardware, if I'm not wrong. Yes. So could you enlighten us a bit yeah. about that? So if you see this hardware, this mm -hmm. hardware on this bike has been designed by us. Okay. And the software that runs inside is also made by us. Right. So when we just started, right, we were kids. And uh, in automotive industry, you need to have some pedigree. Only then people buy your, uh, your offerings, right? So when we started, no one was making these hardware for us. So we had to make the hardware, we had to make the mm -hmm. software. And our intention was to build an Android for EV, just like you have a smartphone and you get the same practically 95% of the functionality, even in a 6,000 rupee smartphone and like the same functionality in a 60,000 rupee smartphone as well. So EVs will come in all shapes and sizes. Absolutely. Yulu is there, like other people, some, someone is making scooters, Ether is making full fancy scooters. Other people also have aspirations and there would be different price points at which that these EVs will be made and they'll be sold. But not everyone has the technical capability to build a fancy team, build the entire technology stack and make it democ uh, democratize it for everyone. So that is our intention here. We plan to democratize the entire technology stack 
so if you are an ev manufacturer and oem who is trying to get into the ev game or the charging point game rather we are more than happy to give our technology to for you we can you can license it build this entire thing in fact right now with our technology it only takes about less than a week to make your vehicle smart regardless of whatever your vehicle is when we started back in 2019 at the end of 2019 our our, our software only used to run on just one version of a bike now it runs on 50 per 50 plus models of bike anything that is there and uh, since when we started we we had a lot of to and fro uh, travel to china that's where we saw how the two wheeler revolution uh, electric vehicle revolution came there and from there we had these learnings that everyone would be making these evs let's make a technology so that smart evs are not for just for the uh, you know people who are very well off so what exactly are these components that you know I, if I was to start an EV company today, what exactly can I get from Revolts? Well, you can get, you can buy anything. So there are only key, few key components in an electric vehicle. There is the controller, mm -hmm. there is the motor, and there is the battery, right? And then there is the speedometer as well, right? Right. So for all these components to be connected, the entire connectivity solution we are providing to you. So let just when one once a smartphone was made smart, like mm -hmm. Uber was possible, Facebook was possible, a lot of things were Absolutely. possible. Once a vehicle is made smart, you can put it on a bounce network, sharing network, True. swiggy network, whatever fleet network you like, and you can choose. Just like you can share your charges, you can also choose to share your bike. That is already built into the software. And let's say you want to get into fleet management, so already our fleet management dashboard and all these things are already built and served right off the bat. So all you need to really worry about is just integrating all these things, getting the data on our stack, and you are good to go. Awesome. So, well, if you have an EV in mind, you want to manufacture an EV, Revos has exactly what you need to connect everything together, put everything together. Now, coming back to Bolt, yes. you say, you know, you find it, you pay for it and you charge. Yes. So, can you explain a bit about that model? Yeah. So, uh, what did, uh, in uh, like, the business model familiar is like PCO box that a lot of people were setting it in front of Kirana shops. But I would say it's like a slight hybrid. So, it's like, it, it would be as as ubiquitously present as a PCO box, but the model is like Airbnb. So you are the host of the charger, you set it up, you put the GPS location where you see the charger is fit. Once you've initialized it, it's the same app for the owner and for the user. There, is, there are no separate apps. And as an owner, you can set the rates for your any charger that you please. You can set 10 rupees per hour, 20 rupees per hour, whatever suits your budget. Let's say if it's like a very popular location and you're giving parking along also with that, so you can maybe set in a higher rate. And, and let's say if you want to, you're an evangelist and you want a lot of people to adopt, then you can set it for public free also. There is no, the choice is completely up to the user. Okay, so once I pick up a charger, I can set it up on my, at my place or wherever I wish. Yes. And I can make it free or I can charge uh, for my, usage. Yes. Now in an hour, so you mentioned it is charged on an hour basis or on a time basis. Yeah. So how much of electricity is used or transferred to the vehicle in that one hour? Yeah. So actually that answer is a bit complicated but I would like to simplify a little bit. So it really depends on the vehicle chemistry. So if you look at it, uh, look at vehicles, we've been saying it for quite some time, all these EVs are very comparable to smartphones, right? So when your smartphone came, it used to take like six to eight hours to charge and it barely used to last like five to six hours. Now it charges for 30 minutes, it lasts a day, right? But what has really changed is the smartphone and the adapter that comes with the smartphone. Your socket has not changed, your socket right. has remained the same, right? right? So, in the current technology, the version we have right now, it can charge an EV, a two-wheeler in about three to four hours full charge, right. right? And going ahead when version two and three of these EVs, the next generation of EVs when they arrive, they would be probably be able to charge the same EVs in one hour using the same socket. So you don't have to rebuild the infrastructure just because fast charging would arrive in the future. Earlier in the presentation today, while you were talking about the product, you also mentioned that we can use it for the next 10 to 20 years. Yes. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. Because if you look at it, the shape, this shape is the standard socket. This this socket has powered has powered the entire country's electricity need. It has catered to them for this humble socket has been good enough for 70 years. Mm -hmm. You can plug in your AC, you can plug in your geyser, whatever it is, very high load equipment, electrical equipment, you can plug into this socket. So technically, if you look at it, a two-wheeler takes lesser electricity than uh, your AC, right. right? Right. So we had this question that why do you need like a special shape of basically a socket and special DC chargers or whatever it is to basically charge these fast? What really has to improve is the adapter 
and the charging technology, not the socket from which power is dispensed. So, for example, this dispenses around 3.3 kilowatt. This is rated okay. for 3.3 kilowatt right. hour. Even with the losses, it will come up to at least 2.5 kilowatt hour. Even the biggest batteries that are being offered right now, they are 3 kilowatt hour, 4 kilowatt hour. Yeah. So, the the limitation I would say is more on the battery side and the charging, uh, the charging circuitry that has to be put inside the bike or on the adapter for that to be made possible. Once this socket is installed, I don't think there is any need to be put anything special. For this, for any two-wheeler or three-wheeler, this is enough. Any needs for maintenance? No maintenance. We have made it for India. Uh, it can work without. It can work with internet as well. But uh, we have primarily made it to. Uh, we have made it work with Bluetooth because so it just works like a Fitbit. So uh, it uses the internet connection of your phone to sync all the data because internet in India is a is still not a basic necessity. Right and uh, we don't want that we didn't want another challenge to be faced by the deployer mm -hmm. when he is deploying this infrastructure then he has to think about oh i have to put a sim mm -hmm. i have to put the opex goes up i have to pay sim charges so that's why we are primarily focusing on the bluetooth method right so thank you so much for talking to us about this so this is a bolt charging point from rev os we'll be talking about this more in detail do stay tuned there's another video you can go check it out but this was the co-founder of RevOS and he's spoken all about this. If you have more doubts about this, do mention in the comments below. We will definitely get back to you. Even if we don't have the answers to it, we will yes. get in touch with RevOS and get the answers to you. And that's it from us for now. Thank you for watching. This is Stephen Neal signing off for DriveSpark.